Hello, my friend. Glad to see you made it here today because we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. So I want to talk a little bit about the teat seats or the fingers of God or the tassels of God. You know, the, the book of Numbers, chapters 15, is the first time we hear about the tassels of God, and God said, make these things for yourself. Never said how to make them, or what they should look like, or be like. So there's a couple different kinds here, you know, that I got. This one here is, uh, is a little bigger than the rest, and it's more so you can see it as we talk about it. And this one here is made different than this one because it represents the 613 statutes and precepts, ordinances of God that define holiness that we find there in the book of Numbers and Leviticus and, and Deuteronomy and, and the five books of Moses and what we call the Torah. Now God says to us, right, make for these things, make these things for yourselves so that to remind you, to remind you not to go whoring after your own heart because your own heart will deceive you and lead you down paths of suffering. But to cling to God, right, is to remind us that we are chosen by God. Chosen by God. It's to remind us that the Lord, our God, is with us, and, and he is with us always, no matter where we go. And so, you know, I got these, I make one, I always put it on my right thigh. But in the Bible it says we should have four of them and have them all around our garments on all four corners. No, when he says our garment or our covering, you know, a lot of people believe he's talking about the prayer shawl. Because we see in the Torah, that's where they were given the instructions of wearing a covering and the prayer shawl. And many people wear these things in order to display to other people their identity. <laughs> it, it identifies them as being different than anyone else. But God says they have a purpose and there is a purpose within them. Like the prayer saw, the purpose is to remind us that we are covered in God's grace, we, we are covered in God's protection, we are covered and God's love. And when Jesus is talking to his group of Jewish people, and, and he says to them, you know, go into your closet, go into your room, a lot of people believe he was saying to them, you know, take your prayer shawl and, and cover yourself and speak to God in secret because it's the things you're doing in secret that God is paying attention to. You know, we should be very careful to display our righteousness in front of others as a form of religion. You know, we want to display our religiousness to other people. You know, I... I have a hard time with that, you know. Of. And Jesus says they have received their reward in full. But you, don't be like them. <laughs> don't be like them. You pray in secret. You go into your room and talk to God in secret. It's about 
the personal relationship you have between you and God. It is not about displaying some sort of holiness or power or whatever it is to, to other people so that we may receive the approval of other people. Instead, this is just about you and God. And, and if it is about you and God, we, we don't need anybody else. We, we can do this all alone, in secret, with God himself. So this one, and you know, I could get into it, but I don't want to today. But this one represents the 613 statutes, and precepts, ordinances of God that define holiness. And that's, that's what we find in Jesus Christ. As he says, I come to fulfill, not to abolish, not to erase, not to diminish, but to fulfill to fulfill the way of holiness so that we could identify holiness. And then there's this one, you know, it it's, represents the name of God, yod Hey vav Hey, And each letter within the alphabet is represented by a number. And the Hebrew alphabet. And so, you know, you got your, uh, this is wrapped here a certain amount of times, and here's one here. Again, the Yod, Hey, Bob, Hey, and, and uh, it's wrapped a certain amount of times to represent each of the letters. And, you know, many people, the Jewish people, all say the name of God is pronounced as Yahweh. And yet nobody really knows how it's pronounced or how it was pronounced. It was supposed to be an unspeakable name. The, the name of God was holy and it was too holy for us to even speak. But we came to know God through Jesus Christ. And so it's important. And, and you know, I have these, and nobody ever asks, what is that for? What is that about? Why do you have that thing on, on your side? Why do you tie that to your clothing, right? And nobody ever asked. <laughs> nobody really cares. And so it's not about again, seeking the approval of your neighbors or your Christian folks. It's just about following the commandments of, of God. And, you know, I, I recognize and understand we are, we are not bound to the Torah. Instead, we are bound to Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of the Torah. But you know, that's what Torah, the word Torah is like hitting the mark. If you're an archer, you're going to hit the mark. That's Torah. But Torah also means guide. It is a guiding light. And it's what we found in the guidance of the Torah is eternal life. It's a guiding light unto eternal life. So if you wanted to make one of these, you definitely could. And the Bible says, go for it. You should do it. <clears throat> it's got 10 wraps here in the beginning to represent the yod. Five wraps to represent the hay. Six wraps to represent the Vav and five wraps to represent the hey. Yod, a Vav, a. Those are the letters of God's name, the unspeakable name. And 
what does it say? What does it mean? Right? And, and, and God says to Moses, it, it means I am. I am. That's what I am. I am that I am. And, and I am God. If you put the two together, and I made, don't have it with me, but I have made my own my own style of tassel and, and it puts the two together because as I, in the book of Isaiah and the name Isaiah is Yahweh is salvation right and, and, and deliverer God brought salvation to the people back in the days of, of the Exodus, and, and Jesus brought salvation to us in our day as we are seeking to be Exodus or <laughs> taken out of this world. And so when you put them together, I am salvation. That's what I am. And, and that's what Jesus came to fulfill came to display, came to show us. Now there's many things that are awesome about it. None of these cords are cut. As you can see, there's a loop here and one blue cord, even though it looks like two blue cords down here in the bottom, it is actually one cord. And, and so that blue cord represents God and how God is neatly woven within us. And, and that's what you can see through this. You can see it through here, you know, how the blue cord is woven all the way through it. And, and, and it's pronounced. You can clearly see the blue separating from the white. The white represents purity, uh, a purity, an honesty, something good. Blue represents the Lord our God, God our Father, and the Son, Jesus Christ. You know, they are one, as Jesus displayed to the world. He and the Father are one. They are not two, not two separate gods, but they are one and the same God. And, and Jesus, the prayer of Jesus Christ, was that one day we would come to know God, and because we know Jesus Christ, we know God. And it was Jesus Christ's prayer that one day not only would we come to know God, but that we would be one with God, just as he was one with God, that we too would be one with God. And that's why it's neatly woven. The blue cord is neatly woven throughout the whole tassel or tzi. So you would see, come to understand, recognize that the will of God is to be alive within you. See, all this has great meaning. And it's a great teaching tool. And, and, and if you were a parent, and you had children, this is a great way to teach to your children about God. Again, the first time we hear about it is Numbers chapter 15 and 16. And God explaining that we, this is a forever, forever throughout all of your generations. 
you will do these things and you will teach these things to your children. And, and that's important, I think. And, you know, I, a lot of people want somebody else to teach to their children God or about God, but there's no greater way to display your faith to your children than to, to do this with them and, and to sit down with them and, and make these tassels with them. You know, somewhere along the line, the tassel or the fingers, if it was tzitzi, it would be the fingers of God, the hand of God, and we are walking in the hand of God, with God's hand as children walk with their parent, their father. But somewhere along the line, it got changed to wing. Wing, so every time you hear it in the Bible, and they speak of wings. He's talking about this, the tassel or the tzitzi. Now, it's interesting because let's look at it. God being woven neatly within all of it. We have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five, we have six white strands in the tassel, six white, five represents the hand of God holding tight to you. And then we have the blue, two blue cords. And all together, there's eight, right? All together, there are eight chords, and that's the thing. On the eighth day, God made it flesh, right? In seven days, God did all of his work, and he rested on the seventh day. And then on the eighth day, it became a reality. It all became flesh. Many people believe it was on the eighth day God allowed Adam and Eve into the Garden of Eden, into his presence. Eighth day is completion. Seventh day, it's all completed. The work is done. The eighth day, it has become flesh. Jesus Christ is the Word of God in flesh and again that's why it's woven into it word of god in flesh it's now seeable it's now presentable it's now palatable it's now understandable five loaves Two fish. Jesus said, I desire to show the people compassion as they had all gathered together. And Jesus had been healing many people throughout the day. And now the day was coming to an end. People are singing and rejoicing and praising God. And they're just kind of all hanging out and fellowshipping together and creating friendships and relationships with one another, enjoying the goodness of, of God in their presence because the goodness of God is a healing power. Everybody who was there that day who had sickness, disease, who were crippled, who were lame, who were blind, who were deaf, who were demon-possessed, suffered from all sorts of illnesses, including mental illnesses, spiritual illnesses, were being healed. And so they had good reason to praise God, to worship God, to sing and rejoice with one another. 
So Jesus says, I have compassion for the people. I don't want to send them away. You may faint on their way home. Let's feed them. My desire is to feed them. Right? Some of the disciples said, Lord, how are we going to feed them? There are thousands, there are 5,000 men alone. That doesn't even count the women or the children. Then, if we, all 12 of us and yourself, went out and grabbed a job and began getting paid, it would take a whole year's wage just to be able to purchase for a crowd this size a crumb. A crumb. And, and, and your desire is to feed them? You ask the impossible. <laughs> How can we feed them, right? And Jesus is displaying faith and asking his disciples, his students, to have faith. Have faith in me, says the Lord. What shall we feed them? What do you got? You know, and none of them recognize or could understand what they had. Don't know what we got. We have nothing. We neither have the money nor the resources nor the ability to feed these people and you ask the impossible. Yet all the while, what, what do you have? Place your trust in me. Place your faith in me. He's displaying to the world, to these people, to his students, to everybody who had gathered there that day that he was something. And not just something. He was everything they needed. And outside of him, they didn't need anything else. He was their deliverer. He was tending to their needs. What is it they needed most? They needed him. They needed a God. And not just a, a, a God-like figure, but a God who responded. Who responded to their needs. A, a God who was able to provide for their needs. A God who could heal the sick. A God who could defend the least. A God who could do the things only God could do. He was everything they needed. He was. And so I would hope that we recognize that this is why we don't need the rosary. We, we don't need uh, Mary, we don't need saints, we don't need anything else because in Jesus Christ we have everything we need. Everything we need. Andrew, <laughs> the brother of Simon Peter, brings a little boy and says, Lord, right? The least, a little boy, has something to offer. He has five loaves of bread and, and two fish. And you know what's interesting? This was the second time Jesus had performed this miracle. This is the second time 
Jesus had done this. And still they're questioning. They're questioning his authenticity. Andrew's not questioning him. As a young boy who comes to his father, right? If we only came to God as a child, these guys have a grown-up adult eyes, grown-up adult logical thinking brains. <laughs> we cannot do this, yes, for the impossible. But I am everything you need. Young boy who can't see the difference or understand logic difference between a little bit and nothing at all. All he has brings is, this is what I got. Five loaves and two fish. Jesus, that, that's perfect. You know, the, the little boy brings what he has. And what do, we, what do you have? five loaves and the two fish. And we see that here. Two fish represented here with the two blue cords. I have faith in you. That's, that's what he had. And, and that's what he displayed and that's what he brought. Here you got the five loaves and the two fish. Like a, like a young boy who grabs hold of his father's hand. I have you. I have everything I need. I believe you. I believe you want to have and display and show compassion to all these people. I believe within you is everything we need. I believe you. You are everything we need. And here I am. Jesus, thanks God. I thank you for this food we have. I thank you for supplying to these people everything they need. I thank you for having the ability to be everything they're not. So then we have a sixth little finger. <laughs> Sometimes we wonder, are we important? Do we matter? Do we have value? Where does, where does our validation come from? And, and Jesus, after giving things, divides up the bread, he breaks the bread and, and hands it to his disciples. Right? Jesus didn't hand out all that food all by himself. He gave it to his disciples. Same way he gives to each one of us our daily portion. He gives to each one of us a piece of the Holy Spirit. And within that Holy Spirit, within it, we, we are given a gift. Not all of us have the same gift, but we are all, and my shirt says, Team Jesus. 
We are all part of Team Jesus. And that's what I struggle with in my own life. It is, I can't recognize or understand why we don't receive everybody who is inside the body of Christ as Team Jesus. Why are we all not working together for the greater good? Why, why is it your ministry versus your ministry versus her ministry versus his ministry, my ministry. I, I don't see it as my ministry. It, it is Jesus Christ is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God of Gods. And it's in him I have placed my trust and it's he who has given to me a little something. Something to be trusted with. We should be good stewards of Christ's kingdom and the things that come into Christ's kingdom. So it really bothers me when I meet Christian people and they are not a good steward of the things of Christ. That bothers me. And because I'm a sinner, I'm a man made of flesh, I, I have a hard time dealing with other people when they don't take that stewardship seriously. That we should be faithful with even the little. If we are faithful with a little bit, then God would put us in charge of great things. Son, you are faithful with little. But, but it is because of you, the many are being fed. Because you are a good steward with the little bit you had. I will use it to feed the many. It wasn't about his ministry. It wasn't about their ministry. Jesus Christ is what they had. And he was everything they needed. And he giving to each one of them a little bit of responsibility, a little bit of accountability, something small to be a good steward of. Be faithful with this little bit that I give you. And, and pass it out to the people as they have needs. And maybe that's why you're here today, because you, you had a need within your life. And what you needed was to hear that Jesus Christ is enough. He's here for you. Who's going to pass out that food? Well, here is that sixth finger. It's white, it's, it's pure, and it's honest. You are going to hand it out. And all together, it, it, it is eight. And all together, it, it creates a family. All together, it is the fulfillment of God's word in flesh. And that's what this represents to me. This is why I try to be a good steward with what God has given me. 
And right now, God has given me the ability to make these videos. God has given me the ability to speak to you today. He's given me the strength, the courage, the wisdom, the know-how, the faith to be able to deliver to you your daily portion. Give us today our daily bread. Feed us, nourish us, strengthen us, so we may not fall into temptation. And, and, and all of it is wrapped around tightly into one thing, the blue cord. And, 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 and what is it? What is the blue cord? You, you have everything you need. You have God within your presence. And that's why when we're in prayer and we're going to pray and we're earnestly seeking an answer to our prayer, right there in the secret places of our room where nobody is here and nobody is listening, we are displaying faith in God. Faith in God's presence. And that is exactly what you need. That's what you need. And honestly, you have everything you need. On that day, People were being healed. People were finding the cure, right? There's many people in our world today who are seeking a cure for something. And they cannot grab hold of the cure because they are trying to get the cure from here. They're trying to get the cure from here, but in the end, they only find a, a drug dealer. I deal drugs. I, I don't display a cure for anything. I sell drugs. But Jesus will cure you. He will heal you. Spiritually. Physically. Mentally cure you and heal you from all different sources or kinds of brokenness. On that day, the blind received their sight. On that day, the deaf received their ears. They could hear. On that day, the mute could speak. On that day, crippled men stood up and walked. On that day, mothers, fathers found a reason to praise God because their children were freed from the tormenting, from the tormenting demons and the devils. They found faith in God. They found everything they needed. And when they least expected it, they even found a little bit of food inside of five loaves and two fish. They ate it and were satisfied. They were satisfied. 
They received it. They brought it in and, and, and were satisfied. Everyone was full. They ate until they were satisfied. They found everything they needed. I hope and pray today you have found everything you needed and you are satisfied. Join with me in prayer. We have a sick neighbor whom we were working with and helping here in our hometown. He has now come to the end of his life. He will probably be heading home. Home to the Father. Within the next few days, pray for him. Pray for his mercy. I have a friend living in the Philippines. Her name is Lally Mae. And, and she's struggling right now to take care of her children and herself. And she's seeking to go abroad, <laughs> seeking to go to Germany to work in a foreign country, speaks a foreign language, to be able to make a little more money, enough money to feed and to clothe her family. So pray for her success. Pray for her mercy. Join us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all the good things we have within our lives because we know all good things are flowing from you into our lives. We thank you, Father, for the food we have to eat. We thank you for the energy we receive from that food. Continue to nourish us and to build us up, creating us to be your new temple. We thank you, Father, for the faith we have and the ability and the ability we have to see you and to hear you during these times of trouble. We ask that you would sit with Darren personally, holding his hand during this transition. We ask that you would continue to guide and lead Lally Mae down a path of righteousness so that she may confidently feel appreciated by fulfilling the needs of her family. Lead her and guide her. We thank you for the air we breathe. We thank you for the lights we have. We thank you, Father, for the birds that sing. We thank you, Lord for everything. We thank you because in you we have found everything we need. We shall not want. We shall not want because you are our shepherd. Even if we walk down through the valleys of the shadows of death, we shall not fear. And if we stand in the face of evil, we shall not be afraid because you are our shepherd. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Surely you shall lead us into green pastures. You will deliver us to streams that are gently flowing. Gracious Father, 
Surely, 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 we shall live within your house forever. For that we are thankful. We thank you, Father, for being our guide, our dad, our everything. Thank you, and amen. Take Amen. It. If she gives you her heart, don't you break it. Let your arms be a place she feels safe in. She's the best thing that you'll ever have. She always has trouble falling asleep. But she likes to cuddle all under the sheets. She loves pop songs and dances. Bad trash TV There's still a few other things She loves love notes and babies And likes giving gifts Has a hard time accepting A good compliment And she loves her whole family And all of her friends So if you're the one she lets in